Welcome back to Library Trust YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to make a double breasted blazer. It's a notch color blazer and it has two buttons at the overlap area. It's very simple to make. I'm sure if you pay attention to the tutorial, you're going to get it once. And at the hemline, it has pleats around the hemline. So you just, if this is what you like to learn, just pay attention and you get it. Welcome back to Library Trust YouTube channel. Today we'll be learning how to make a double breasted blazer. So a double breasted blazer is a type of blazer that has an overlap that is the there's an extension that laps on each other at the center front. Okay. So now you can see I already have a, the, uh, my basic body is ready. There is already a tutorial on how to do that on the channel. And you can notice that before my basic bodies, I have some extension here. So that is going to be my overlap for my double breasted. So now for this extension, it depends on the measurements you wish to use. For mine, I'm using three inches. You can use two, you can use three, four, five, or even six inches, depending on how bold you want your overlap to be. So for this tutorial, I'll be using three inches. So from that three inches, I'm starting my basic bodies. Okay, I already have my basic bodies here. I have my princess that it's story on how to draft a princess that is also on the channel, both front and back. So here, my neckline width is three inches as usual, and the depth of my neckline is also three inches. But for this tutorial, because I want the notched area to be a bit down, I'll be extending the depth of my neckline to four inches. So I'm marking the four inches here and I'll use my curved ruler to redraw my neckline. Okay. So after that, the next thing I need to do is to determine my breaking point. My breaking point is where the fold of my lapel is going to stop. I'm sure we'll understand this better as we go on. Okay. So your breaking point can either be on your chest line can be on the bust point it can be on your waistline anywhere you want it to be but for me i just want this to be a bit above my waistline so i can choose like an inch or two inches above my waistline which is 15 or 14 because my waistline is 16 inches so let's say i'm just in between i can use 14 and half for my i'm using 14 and half for my breaking point and the 14 and half, I'm going to extend it here so that it's going to guide me. I'm extending it into my overlap allowance that I have here, the 3 inches overlap allowance. So now the next thing for me to create my lapel is to connect from this breaking point all the way to my neckline using a ruler in a slanting form. So I'm just going to place my ruler like this and on my neckline. And then I'm going to draw a straight line like this. I hope you can understand this. From my neckline, I draw a slant line to my breaking point. Okay, so now that I have my slant line, I can decide how my lapel is going to look like. So now using a pencil, because this is not the actual line, you can see the intersection here you can actually decide on how you want your lapel to be okay so i can have something like this as my lapel so once i have that and it's going to remember it's going to come like this so this is just like a decor this is not the actual line so now that you you're sure how you want your lapel to fall this is how i want my lapel to fall this is how I want it to be by the time I'm done. You can actually mirror what you have on this side, on this side also, because this is the actual side that you are going to be drafting it so that by the time you're through, it will fall to your chest area here. Remember, this is the chest area. So I've decided this is how, this is the shape that I want for my lapel. I'm okay with how it is, it is here. So the next thing I have to do now is just to mirror what I have here on this side. And to do that, I'm just going to take my ruler 
and then connect this okay i'm going to connect this in a slanting form like this depending on how wide i want my lapel to be so now i'll take my measurements it can be one and a half two inches or two and a half inches depending on how wide you want it to be for me i think i can go for two inches or let's say two and quarter okay two and quarter is okay for me and then i'm going to take my curved ruler and then i'll curve it slightly slightly downwards like this okay so now i'm sure we understand what i mean by breaking point so this is what we have and this is going to be folding over to this side by the time we are through okay so now if you're okay with where your lapel is here you can actually go ahead and draft your collar but remember i went this is my actual neckline three inches and i went down by one inch because i want the the notch area to fall a bit down that's why i went down by one inch so i'm going to try as much as possible to adjust this neckline i'm going to try first much first to adjust my lapel in a way that it follows this my new neckline like this okay don't be confused it's very simple what i just did here is just to adjust so that by the time i cut out my lapel it's going to fall on this four inches mark that i want so this is what i'll be cutting out now and the next thing to do now is to decide to draft your collar because this is a notched collar it's also going to be having a standard collar here and to do that we need our back neckline measurements okay so this is my back but this drafted already i drafted directly on the fabric and it's going to be having a seam line at the back because that is how i want it i just like to have a seam line at the back of my blazer or jacket i feel it just gives it more fitting so i'm just going to be folding the half inch allowance that i'm going to use to sew the seam, the seam line together and then i will measure what i have on my back neckline the neckline is three inches by one and a half inches you can see three inches by one and a half so after folding this in and taking the measurement i have around three and a half three three and a half to three three quarter as my back neckline so now the three and a half the three three quarter inches i'm going to take my tape through and then do an extension on my front neckline here so using my tape, tape measure i'll place my tape through on three quarter like this i'll take it and then i'm going to take my ruler to draw a neckline like that and remember our back neckline is not straight i've not cut this out so this is the this is the curve right here it's not going to be straight it's going to be a curve uh -huh. i hope you can see it clearly like this so this is the curve so now to have a little bit of curve right there I'm going to measure half inch away from what I have here and then using a slightly curved ruler I'm going to connect this back to the neckline you can see that it blends better like this okay so that is set to this is going to be my center back and this or all this is for the back where the collar here is going to be for the front so now to settle the front collar on my lapel area you can go in by one or one and a half inch i'll be going in by one and a half inch and i'll mark the one and a half inches there and then i'll be going up by one and a half inches also and then i'll mark the one and a half inches so using my stretch ruler i'll connect this one and a half inches to where the point intersect here to form like a right angle so here i'm going to connect this like this okay and once i connect this i'll measure what i have i think i have around two two inches two three because if you want it longer you can extend it but i okay i'm okay with what i have here so what i have here is around two and quarter i'm going to be replicating it on my center back from my remember this is the actual line now this line 
is no longer our line so from here i'll be measuring i will i'll measure the two and quarter and then i'm going to connect it i'm going to square it like that so using the curved ruler a slightly curved ruler i'll connect from here to here to cut out my collar okay so this is going to be my collar and this is what i'm cutting out i just want it to be a bit good so that we'll see it so this is my standard collar and this is going to be my lapel but before i cut this out now i'm going to retrace it so using an interface that is quite feasible they also call it stay i'm going to play this place the interface on it like this and you can see that i can see my collar very boldly so i'm going to trace out this collar okay so that i can add my seam allowance to it so i'm tracing out my collar okay so now this is my collar let me just label this at the center back and this is where i'm going to be sewing it to my so that i don't get confused so the next thing to do now is to add half half inch round this so now i'm going to be adding half half inch allowance round i already added my seam allowance to the pattern so i don't need that the allowance i just needed to add half inch round this and i'm going to be adding that on my fabric so now we are through with cutting out our our double breasted blazer and this blazer is going to be having uh, like an extension like a pleating at the hemline so the actual measurement is 38 inches and i'm going to be having six inches split so 38 minus 6 is going to give me 32 so i added one inch as my seam allowance that's why i have a total of 33 inches here so from the 33 inches mark i'm just going to add my pleating to it so i'm going to cut this and the, that is also not important if you want your blazer to be free you may not add your that but i just like the seam line how it this is and also the that is going to help by the time i cut it out now i'll be needing a facing for this so the that is just going to once i cut this out it will help me to know that okay this is the fit i can also use this part of the dress to cut out my facing for my jacket okay so now i'll be cutting this and then i'll be transferring it to the fabric and then bring it back so that we can continue okay so i already had that allowance around my collar so now i'm just i just thought to show us i'm going to cut this out so that i won't get confused okay so i'm cutting along my new neckline Color is out now, so this is going to be our color. So this is the color. And this is the lapel. It's going to fall like this. Remember when I was telling us to actually mirror how we want it to be, okay? So it's going to fall on our chest line and I want it a bit lower. That's why I went down by 3 inches. Assuming I did not go down, it's going to fall around here. But this is what I want. That is why I did that, okay? So I'm going to cut the rest of the fabric now. And then I'm going to bring it back to show us okay so this has been cut out now this is the side front this is the central front this is the lateral area and this is the collar so the collar is going to just fit like this so you just need to notch this area the center back the shoulder the front shoulder so that it will guide you when you're sewing so i've gone ahead to cut out all my fabrics okay 
it's a lot so i don't want to i just had the necessary allowance where needed and i cut out the fabric so the next thing i'm doing now is to sew them together so by the time i join them together it will be smaller so that i'll be able to show us i'll take it to the sewing machine now and then sew the princess that together so that i can have less pieces to work with and then i'll bring it back to show us i've also cut my uh, my collar i decided to cut it separately if you want to cut it together you make sure that your center back area is on food and you're not going to be adding allowance but i had that allowance because i cut separately and i'll be joining them together so i went ahead to add interface to one side of the collar also so to sew this i'll be joining the center back of the collar together like this with the allowance that i left and I also join this, then I'll use it to turn each other. So I'm going to do all this now and bring it back to show us. Okay, so this is the back panel. I've joined the princess seam together, as you can see. And this is the center back line that I was talking about. I just like to have a seam at my center back. So this is the right side of the front panel. And this is the, of the back panel, sorry. And these are the two front panels. Remember, there is this. The front is not closed. Okay, so I've joined it. I used my pattern to cut out this on my fabric. And I joined it on the same line using half inch allowance. Okay, and this is it. And I want to have to notch my center front. Remember, this is our pattern. And this is the actual center front on the pattern. This is the center front before the the overlap allowance. So I went ahead to notch the center front, and this is what it's going to look like. The lapel, I also notched the lapel area. So the lapel is going to fold like this. And then the other side of the front will also I'll match it to my center front here. So this is the overlap I was talking about. That's why it's called double breasted. This is the overlap and the lapel for this will also will also go like this. By the time we are through, you can see that our double breasted jacket is coming out nicely and our overlap is not too much. I said I wanted three inches. That is why I have this. You can do more you can do less depending on what you want okay so now that we're almost through the next thing to do i already cut out like i said i'm not going to be lining it fully i just cut out facing so using my center front half center front i use this to cut out facing for my front i cut two of these for my facing if you're going to be fully lining it then it means after cutting this you need to cut the side front also so that you can also join it together the same way you joined the main fabric then you can use it to turn each other but i'm just using the facing so i'm just working with this and for the back also i also cut out this small facing so now i'm going to be joining the front and the back together on the shoulder okay i place it on each other and then join them together on the shoulder like this and i also do the same for the facing so this is my collar like i said i i want to join it together at the center back and then i use them to turn each other let me remove the pin so that we can see it well and then you need to give this a good press i'm just rushing this for the sake of the tutorial okay so i joined this together on the center this is the center back on the center back and then i did the same for the other side and then i placed them on each other and then i sew it together remember when i was drafting i notched this arrow to indicate that that is where i'm going to sew on my collar so that's the open part this part is the part that is going to be open that i've sewn this completely 
so i'm going to use it to turn each other and then we are supposed to give this a very good press and then after joining our shoulder we're going to join this around our collar i'll show us as we go okay so i've joined the front and back together on the shoulder as seen and i went ahead to sew my collar around the neckline so i make sure that the center back match each other and then i just sew it like that so the collar has been sewn to our main bodies and i also joined my facing like i said this is the facing i joined them together on the shoulder just like i did for the main bodies so this is the shoulder so now to cover all these rough edges of our collar i will use the facing to turn it neatly so i'm just going to match the center back of the facing to the center back of the main bodies and then i'm going to pin it like that and like that then i'm going to sew it so that by the time i sew it i'll be able to turn it like this and it will be neatly finished okay so i've pinned it together like this this is the neckline and turns out to match you can see the shoulder front the front and back shoulder the whole need to match for you to get the accurate result and you can see how everything also matches at the edge here okay so now remember that the center front is also opened and our facing also covers it so after pinning the neckline i just pinned it down all the way to the m line on both sides of the center front also so i'm taking this to the sewing machine now and i'm going to stitch everything so they are all sewn now i just need to notch it so that i can relax well then we'll turn it out okay so it has been notched and turned out so you can see this needs a lot of ironing so we need to iron everything all this puffy area needs to be ironed so that it can be flat and you can see our notched color right here okay you can see it on both sides so we are just going to continue i'm going to iron everything when i'm done because this is it but when you are sewing yours make sure you iron every step of the way like i always say it is very very important for neatness and best results okay so now this is our overlap so there's going to be a button here and here so i'm going to fix some button here like i think 10 to 12 buttons on both sides on this and this side of the lapel so now that we are through with this what i just need to do is to shape the side of my dress i'm going to shape it on the side using the actual measurement of the owner and after that i'll fix my sleeve the basic sleeve and then remember i said it's going to be having the pleats at the m line so i'm going to put the pleats also okay so i've added my sleeve like i said it's just the basic sleeve i have a tutorial on how to draft the basic sleeve already on the channel and this is the m line i pleated some fabric it's not enough i actually wanted the pleats to be very very small and close together but the fabric is not enough so i may do the thought i have and i'm sure by the time i iron them they will lie flat and even more pretty okay so this is our jacket I'm going to be weaving it inside like i said assuming we are doing a full lining where this facing stop i would have just cut the side front also and then i would have added it to it and should have closed it completely for me you can do that when you are doing yours but i'm just going to search all these rough edges and our blazer is ready you can see how beautiful this is looking i've not even ironed at all so far Imagine when I iron it. Imagine what we're going to have. It's so pretty. So just give this. It's very simple. Just follow the pattern. 
very very simple to make just give this a try and let's see what you come up with i'm going to iron it first after giving it a good press i'm going to add my buttons to it like i said this is the full blazer and this is the pleated part of the blazer and just subscribe to our channel if you haven't and click on the notification bell so that you get notified anytime we upload a new video see you in the next one bye okay so this is it on your mannequin i'm here to make my button so i'm just opening it with the pin here and there so you can see what it gave us this is our basic sleeve and this is our notched color and the overlap right here you can see how simple and beautiful this is looking and this is the m line with the pleats so just give this a try and let's see what you come up with it's very simple to make you can 